Hey guys, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Welcome to another awesome craft. I am so excited about this one. It's a trash to treasure and I can't wait to show you guys what we're going to be doing. But first I want to get out of the way that I am very close to my 300 subscribers. There's not many more left that I need. Uh, if you want to win this cute little chicken board with a pocket with the um, pit berries in it, I will ship this to you if you're in the continental United States and your name is picked on the video and I will link it above um, on the video that I made this. But um, once I reach 300 subscribers, I'll do a giveaway and we'll pick from that video any of the comments there. So if you go back to that video, leave a comment if you'd like to win it. Um, I would be glad to send it out to you if you win. So if you could, I would really, really appreciate it. If you would subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, like this video, uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me how you like these crafts that I'm bringing you. And if there's something else that you'd like to see me, uh, give a try. So, um, with that, oh, and the other thing is maybe you could share one of my videos out, um, and get some more people in here. And the sooner that happens and I reach 300 subscribers and it sticks to 300, uh, or above, we can give away that cute chicken board. So with that done, uh, I want to get started and I am so excited about this, um, craft because it's trash to treasure craft. Uh, these tiles I got at the dump. They have a little section that's all sectioned off where you can dump things and they have a section where people drop their broken toilets and tile and um, I don't know, all that household stuff that nobody wants anymore. And I once in a while will stop in over there and see what I can find. Um, and the other day I went and found all these cool tiles. Um, they look like brick. I don't know. I don't know if they're like terracotta, I guess maybe is what it is, but, um, it's so, so cool. And I love the size of it. It's perfect for like a trivet, you know, that we could sit up and you could decorate. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Okay. To make this go a little bit faster. Um, I started already doing the molds with my, um, with my molding clay and I have this mold. This is from Wilton. I ordered this one off from Amazon. I have another one. This one I got from, uh, where did I get this one? Michaels. I got this one from Michaels. Um, but I wanted to use this one cause it looks very springy and it has the birds on it, which I really think are really cute. So I wanted to use the flowers and some of the branches with the birds and make a cute little scene. So, uh, the last thing that I need to do is I did a bunch of, I did one bird each, the one flying one and the sitting one. Um, I did a bunch of leaves, but I need to make one more. And then I did a few of these uh, flowers. And then I did like a couple of ribbons of um, leaves, the, the strip leaves to put on there as well. So I'm going to make my, uh, my little leaf here. And I thought I would save it and show you how I do this. So I just put a glob of it in there. I push it in the hole and then I run my thumb uh, kind of lightly across it because if you run it too hard, it will pull the whole thing up. But you don't really need all that much. So, and then you just um, fold this over a little bit and it pops right out. And there is your leaf. Hopefully you can see that. Isn't that cute? It's a little tiny leaf and let me show you what we're gonna where we're gonna put it I guess I don't need that yet all right so here is what I've been working on it's a little scene on this I'm gonna call it a trivet um, it's a little scene so I've done here's my leaves my little ribbon of leaves and I put those across the top um, 
I could do up the sides as well, but I thought maybe it'd be a little too much. And then I did my stick, um, and then I made my leaves, and then here's my extra one, and I'm gonna put that one in there-ish. Make sure they're all going kind of the same way. It's nature, so not everything is perfect. Um, in doing this, don't be afraid to uh, 3D it or to lay one on top of the other. Um, it kind of gives it a cool effect. I thought where the tail was sticking up over the the stick here of the sitting bird that I thought we'd do a little flower over here and that would look pretty cool. You could go crazy and fill this full of flowers and leaves, but I'm just trying to keep this a little bit more simple. Um, here's my flying bird over here and um, I'm gonna stick this all down which I have not done yet. So I am going to use hot glue, but just so you know, hot glue is probably not the best thing to use on this because um, when you, when I'm going to paint it after and I use my little dryer to, my heat gun to um, dry it and sometimes the heat will uh, cause that um, glue to soften up and it will make that fall. And what I want to do is have this so it stands up in like a stand of some sort. Um, so uh, I want to make sure that they stick well, but I'm going to use my hot glue and hope that I don't get it too hot. And you know, and if you don't use your heat gun, then that's fine. This isn't going to be used for like a hot plate or anything like that. It's just a decorative decorative little trivet, little tile that somebody can put in their kitchen, their bathroom, wherever they feel. very gentle in painting over your clay. You want to get down in the crevices, but you don't want to push too hard because you'll lose that detail. I have watched, um, I'm a fan of Jamie Ray Vintage and I've watched this several times not this, but I mean, I've watched them do these several times and they are so creative. And when I saw these tiles, I said, you know what? I wanna try that. So I've got some spots that you probably can't see up here in the crevices. I don't know if you can see that. And I just take the paint and kind of try and stick it in there without causing too much trouble. Need a little bit more paint. And then I'll have to find a smaller brush that I can get in the little details. I should have should have known and grabbed one, but I did not. And we're just gonna take this and go in all these places that I couldn't with the big, big brush. And this is Waverly Clear Wax. So I'm just gonna go over this with the clear wax. Now this makes it better when I go over it with the antique wax. It's easier to control as far as how much gets on there. I can put it on and wipe it off. Um, and it works really nicely. And it also seals it. Well, guys, I have to apologize. I don't know what happened. If I um, 
get a phone call, a text message or whatever, but it shut my phone off um, as I was getting ready to antique wax my tile. So I went through the whole thing not realizing I was not videoing and I apologize for that. Um, but I'll go over real quick. So I have a little bit of antique wax, a little bit of water uh, in my cup and a little brush. The reason why I have a little brush is because there's lots of details that I want to get into. I want to get it in the crevices so that it kind of sits down. If you can see, it sits down inside those crevices. And when I, what I did was put it on a little bit at a time and I dabbed. I dabbed and dabbed and dabbed very gently and I just kept dabbing and then if there were spots where I wanted to take the wax off um, I just got in the crevices a little bit more but what you want is or what I wanted is the lighter part to be on top so you just dab 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 and then the antique wax kind of gets down into the cracks and crevices and sits in there and it just makes it pop a little bit more so I think it came out really good. It looks very antique. Um, you could have left this white and just put um, some clear wax over it or white wax over it. It would have looked really nice as well. Uh, you can put um, uh, some color on it. I thought of taking a little bit of black um, and just dry brushing over the top a little bit and giving it even more but I wanted to show you what it looked like um, with what I did that I that I thought I was fitting when I didn't so I apologize for that so here's another tile that I have uh, it looked like this and I took some Waverly white chalk paint and I painted it one coat all over. I dried it with my heat gun just so that I can get going on this. And if you remember, I bought a pack of um, 40 cocktail napkins from the Christmas tree shop for $1.99. I don't know why I'm showing you the empty package, but here's the stack. <laughs> and uh, these are the napkins, aren't they beautiful? I just thought they were gorgeous. So springy and beautiful in any farmhouse, any any decor, I think, but um, farmhouse mostly. But look at, it's four. You get four pictures on each napkin. Do you know how many tiles I could do if I had them of all these? I could do mass production with this whole, <laughs> with this whole stack. So um, what I did was I pulled off, and let's see if we can, I probably should have started this before. Um, it's two layers. So basically you just pull the backing off and it's just a piece of like tissue paper. And I'm just gonna put that aside. You never know, I may be able to find something to do with that. So now I just have the one ply of napkin I'm going to take my scissors and try and make a fairly straight cut, but it doesn't really, really absolutely matter because we're gonna do something around the edge of it. it looks awesome. I was so excited when I thought of this and I said, oh, such a good idea. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but this is a very wavy, <laughs> wavy cut, but that's okay. That's gonna be covered up. And you're saying, hmm, how are you gonna cover that up on that, on that piece of tile? Cause that's where it's going, but I'll show you. So I have a little, wow, blue string on it. So this guy's gonna go here. I'm gonna put it in the middle. If you were to do something like this and you wanted to put it down on the edge like that, you could certainly do that. Maybe you could do that. Um, cut your line a little bit straighter than mine is. <laughs> uh, and you could put a little bow at the top, something you know that would match. Um, you could take, uh, I don't have any right handy, but you could take twine and wrap it around and do a little, <clears throat> tie a little bow with the twine. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, but first we're going to, whoops, that's the white. We're going to take my Mod Podge. That's getting way down the bottom here. And we're going to put it on here. I'm gonna put it all over because I need to seal this anyway. So then I'm gonna take my napkin and put it, I'm gonna kinda of try and center it on there as best I can and try to work out the wrinkles and bubbles the best I can. But if you get them, it's okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the napkin itself and seal it down, seal down those edges. Some people wait until it's totally dry. You don't necessarily have to with this. It's totally up to you. Here's what I did. I took some Waverly chalk paint, a little bit, like I just took this, this brush and I just scooped it out and I put it into a red Solo cup and I added a little bit of baking soda, not a lot, maybe one to one ratio, maybe something like that. Um, it's, it's all in how thick you want it and what you want. There's, I don't really think there's a real um, honest to goodness recipe for it. I learned this from Julie Signs and Designs. She has a YouTube channel, it's really good. And she, I saw her do this for the first time and I love it. So this gives a textured paint look. So this is where you dab. So what I'm gonna do is all along the edges here where it's so crisp and not even, I'm gonna just take my paintbrush with a little bit of that textured paint that I made and I'm just gonna dab around the edges. I really like this one. Um, it's got a little bit of um, uh, wrinkling in it, so it almost looks aged, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you want it to look aged, give it a little bit of wrinkle. Or don't try to get all the wrinkles out. And so you just go around um, the edge and see that covers up that that harsh edge and softens it and you can go in as far as you want you can go way in you know and go in on here if you want and not just on the edges I want to keep the integrity of the picture the best I can because I think it's beautiful I love this purple it's so springy So before we get on to the final result of my Trash to Treasure tiles, um, I just wanted to reiterate that this is the giveaway for my 300 subscriber giveaway. So I'm very close. So if you know anyone that may be interested in some of these crafting videos, if you'd share them maybe on your social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, uh, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Uh, hit the bell for future notifi for future uh, video notification of future videos that um, will be coming out. And uh, just like the video, go back and check out my um, video that I did making this, and that is the one that you need to comment on to uh, be in the drawing for to win. Uh, once I hit my 300 and I stick and stay there. Um, so it's 300 or above. So, and I'd like to thank everyone that has already subscribed. I really appreciate it. And I hope you're enjoying my uh, crafting videos. 
and uh, leave a comment down below which tile that you like the best. I know which one I like the best and I think you probably could pick it out as well. Um, but you know, we're just playing around and having some fun and why not? So um, have a good day guys. Thanks a lot for watching.